Glory to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Aigbona, and this is David Aigbona Ministries. Today is our communion and anointing service. We are going to pray briefly. Thereafter, we would hear the word of God. Then we would break bread as brethren. Wherever you are, we are together in spirit. So you are not alone. Jesus said, that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he will be there. So we are in spirit gathered together. You may be physically alone where you are, but you are not alone. And then after the communion, I'll be praying on our anointing oil and we will anoint ourselves. There is a video I did just before this one. It's titled, Why We Take Communion. I encourage those of you who have not watched it to go and watch it. It will bless you and open your eyes to the importance of taking Holy Communion. It is to be taken by anybody who is born again. You must not be confirmed by any uh, religious denomination. Neither must you have any special qualification before you take Communion. As long as you are born again, you are entitled to taking Communion. Let us thank God for today, giving him praise for what he has done in our lives. He is faithful and true. Thank him for his protection and his love. Give him thanks. He is a good God. There is none like him. Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. Lord, we give you thanks for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you, Lord, for frustrating the counsel of the wicked one concerning us. Thank you, Lord, you are good. Your mercy is forever. We give you praise. We give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, you are holy. You are holy. We thank you for your word is true. You will never change. You are God who is love. And you have spared our lives, O oh God, giving us another chance to walk right, another chance to do that which you have called us to do. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to thank the Lord for specific things in your life, giving him praise and thanks. Giving him praise and thanks. Now I want you to forgive everyone who has offended you. Everyone who has offended you, whether they apologized or not, forgive them. Let the offense go. Ask the Lord to heal you of every hurt. Ask him to heal you of every pain. Ask him to heal you of every pain. Ask him to heal you of every pain. Oh Lord, we let go of every offense. We ask for your forgiveness. We forgive those who have offended us, oh Lord. We ask that you heal us. Heal us of every hurt, of every wound and sore in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus. Confess your sins unto the Lord, asking him for mercy. That which you have said, which you have thought, which you have done, ask the Lord for mercy. Ask him for mercy. And he will have mercy on you. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Asking for mercy. Lord, forgive our sins. Forgive the words we have spoken, the thoughts we've had, our actions and inactions. Please, Lord, cleanse us, spiritual body, with the blood of Jesus. Father, you are our God. We yield to you. We ask, Lord, that you will be present wherever this service is participated in. We pray, Lord, that you will stretch forth your hand to confirm your word with signs and wonders. 
Glorify your name, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. And in the name of Jesus, I destroy every power that will rise against this service. I destroy them in Jesus' name and I release the transmission and reception to declare in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that as many as come in contact with this service, they will receive a touch from you, that you will save, you will heal, and you will deliver. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I'm going to be teaching on how to engage in spiritual warfare. How to engage in spiritual warfare. And we are going to read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. While you open your Bibles, I want to encourage those of you who have not subscribed to my channel, David Agbona, that's the name of my channel, please do so and be sure to subscribe to at least two other platforms if you are on YouTube. Go to two other alternate platforms. I'm going to call them now. Because of censorship, not all my videos are on YouTube or Facebook. So many have been taken down. Now, there are other platforms where you will find my channel by the name David Agbona. The channel is on BitChute, Rumble.com, Odyssey.com, Locals.com, um, Brighton. You'll find me on iConnect FX, on TikTok. I am also on SoundCloud. So please, these alternate channels are have shown less censorship, and so I have more videos there. Please be sure to subscribe to at least two of them uh, so that you get uh, blessed by this content coming out every week. Every week, I upload on Friday, prayer, healing, and deliverance, and on Sunday, communion and anointing service, which is the believer's communion and anointing service. So let's read. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now I'm going to be teaching on this um, verse. I'm not going to go much, if at all, into the armor, but I'm going to be explaining who we fight against. Now, the supernatural, which we also call the spiritual, is the one that we fight with. The devil and his host use human agents to carry out their purposes. The purposes of the enemy, the evil of the enemy, comes from the enemy's realm. Satan is not in hellfire as we were made to believe. He is not dwelling in hell. Satan operates from the second heaven. We have at least three heavens because it is written in scripture, Paul got to the, uh, visited the um, third heaven. There is a realm between God's throne and the earth, which is the second heaven. Now, the Bible says that the time will come when Satan will be thrown uh, into the earth. He will be thrown down to the earth from the uh, second heaven. The Bible says that there was no place for them found in heaven. And so they were cast down to the earth. So there is a time that Satan and his angels will be thrown down. The Bible didn't say Satan is in hell. There is nowhere in scripture that says the devil lives in hell. The Bible says the dragon was cast down upon the earth. That that is going to happen at a time. Yes, Satan was thrown to the earth at a time. You know that the second heaven is within the dome. The Bible talks about the firmament, the firmament that has water above. And then there is the, the 
um, atmosphere, space down below. I do not believe the Earth is a spinning ball, spinning around the sun. That was false teach, uh, teaching in geography for an agenda to be fulfilled. The Bible says there's a firmament. Underneath that firmament is where you have the second heaven. That's where the sun moves in, the moon and the stars are. That is where Satan's uh, base is. And the Bible says, yes, he has been cast to the earth. Remember, the earth is under the firmament. And at the time Satan was cast upon the earth, there was no firmament. Because the firmament was created after the fall of Lucifer. So at the time he was cast down, when Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning, there wasn't a firmament. I don't know how that world was at, at that time. But right now there is a firmament. It appears that when God cast Satan down and his fallen angels, they fell into the realm where the earth was. The Bible says the earth was without form. It was without form after the fall of Satan, not before. So something happened over there. But when God was recreating, he placed a firmament, like a dome, to contain this earthly realm and a realm where the evil creatures were. It's a way of, it's just like closing, uh, covering a pot, covers it up with this dome kind of dish, cover a plate to contain sin. And so Satan operates under that dome, under the firmament, but not on the earth. That is, his base is there. And so the fallen angels are there. The Bible talks about them in the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, an angel was sent with the answers to Daniel's prayer, and he was hindered in Daniel chapter 9. He was hindered by the prince of Persia, the fallen angel over the Persian realm, the Persian empire. A demon cannot hold an angel like Michael and detain him. It has to be an angel of similar or higher rank. And so angel Gabriel, sorry, not Michael, I meant Gabriel. So angel Gabriel was detained by another fallen angel on his way to Daniel. Demons don't have that kind of power to detain an angel of the rank of Gabriel. So it tells you that it was one of their former colleagues one of his former colleagues that could detain him, that had that power to detain him. But you see, because Daniel continued praying, even though he didn't know what was going on, that is the importance of consistency. Daniel continued praying. And then God sent angel Michael. Michael, the war angel, when he got there, he released Gabriel and remained there, waiting for Gabriel to fulfill his mission and then return to heaven. Michael had to stay there to keep them at bay because Michael is one angel that no one wants to mess around with. So, demons are falling, uh, uh, the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim when the angels uh, um, got women pregnant so as to spread an evil seed on earth. Those entities, the spirits in those entities were never meant to be. So they have no dwelling in, in heaven. They, ca they cannot dwell uh, anywhere else other than the earthly realm. So these spirits are here on earth, but they are different from the fallen angels, the spirits of the Nephilim and other spirits that existed before Adam was created. Because God has not judged the universe. So these entities are evil spirits. You have evil spirits. You have demon spirits. You have Nephilim creatures. These are creatures that are uh, hybrids. Also moving and they have where they hide. So know the difference between these ones. Fallen angels do not possess human beings. It's demon spirits that possess human beings. Because they want a body to use to express their evil desires. The fallen angels operate from that second heaven. It doesn't mean that they are not on earth. They are on earth. 
Some are even imprisoned on earth. Like we have the four angels imprisoned in the river Euphrates. There are some imprisoned on earth. There are some that are on earth, but their base is in the second heaven, the senior ones. So now let's look at these four classes of spiritual adversaries that we have. Number one is the principalities. In the past, I had little understanding of, of these. And I, I um, assumed them as though the principality was the highest. The name principality is sometimes used for senior angels. And it is also sometimes used in, in the regular form. Principality means first ruler. It means a ruler. Principality means a ruler. In some translations, first ruler, but the Greek translator translation is ruler. So you have the first level. I'm going in ascending order. This scripture was written in ascending order, not descending order. As I said, there are times principality is used to represent the senior angels. When the Bible says Jesus is the head of all principality and power, it refers to all rulers. He's the head over them. But in this context of uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the principality is less than the others. The principality, which is, the, is called ruler in the Greek, is that demon spirit that tries to establish a presence in a person's life. And it does that by getting people to commit sin. The demons that tempt are principalities. The demons that project thoughts to people's um, minds are principalities. The principality spirit is the first one to go and attack a person. He goes, he tempts, and he tempts through thought projection. There are times that a thought that you ordinarily would not invite, you just get, you just, you just flash in your mind. You could be walking down the street and all of a sudden a, a thought flashes to your mind to just um, do something nasty or uh, imagine something dirty. It's not you. It's a demon that throws that thought at you. If you receive that thought and you begin to progress in it, you now consciously think that lustful thought or that violent thought, you begin to meditate on it, then you have sinned. But when the thought flashes, you say, no, you haven't sinned. It's a temptation. So the principality can throw a thought at you and it will say, I, to make you think, think that it is you that has that thought. If you say, wow, I wish I could take that lady to bed. That is the demon that sends that thought to you using the word I to make you now say, maybe I'm the one thinking about it. And then you begin to progress and imagine how you can actually take that lady to bed. Then you have committed sin. So demons operate in a very tricky way. The principalities is the one that will sit on someone's shoulder and begin to whisper thoughts. The principality is the one that will tell you, look at that money, you can steal it. The principality is the one that will tell you, you know, you can just tell a lie right now and get away with this. The principality comes in. And if you accept the work of the principality, you will commit a sin. And what that principality will do is to make you sin again and again and again. And when that principality makes you sin again and again, it begins to break your resistance to sin. The first time you take hard drugs, it's difficult. The second time it's a little easier. For example, somebody can have can fornicate in the month of January. The next time the person fornicates is in the month of July. Six months difference. When the person does it again, the gap reduces. The person next fornicates in the month of September. You see the progression of uh, decay. And then after September, it does it October. Then from November, the person does it every two weeks. The principality is the one that breaks down your resistance to sin by encouraging you to sin again and again and again. 
How do you defeat the principality? Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. Because these spirits, their operation usually begins with your five senses and mainly with your thoughts. They will first, it is through your thoughts that you sin. It begins with your thoughts. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. I'll read. Or well, let's read from verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that's earthly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And now take note of this, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So ensure that you discipline your thoughts. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So everything you do, you say, comes from your heart. So guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it proceed the issues of life. That's what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. So guard your thoughts with the word of God. Ensure that the word of God is what is in your mind. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Whatsoever is honest, whatsoever is holy, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever has good report, think on these things. So guard your heart. Resist the devil will flee from you. James chapter 4 verse 7. Rebuke dirty thoughts that come to you. Monitor what comes into you. Monitor it. Do not expose yourself to pornography. Do not expose yourself to dirty music, to dirty videos, and to dirty stuff. Guard yourself seriously. And um, be sure to study the word of God a lot. Many of you spend more time listening to secular dirty music than you do listening to worship music. And you want to grow spiritually. It's not going to be that easy. Because what you take in would go in, digest in your system, and produce fruit. The next we deal with are the powers. In Greek, the, it is called, the word there is authority. These are the authorities. Authorities have power of choice. Authorities are the ones that decide. An authority is the one that has the power to make decisions. So what happens is when you yield yourself to a principality and it begins to guide you into sin, at some point, a spirit called a power will come in. When the principality has done its job, a higher spirit will come in called a power. And this power is the one that brings about addiction to a sin. It's an, it's an authority. It, by continually sinning, you yield your authority, which is your power of choice, you yield it to a demon spirit. And so that demon spirit becomes the power over you if you continue to sin. People don't get addicted the first time they take some, a dirty uh, drug. They don't get addicted to sex the first time they, they have sex. They don't get addicted to alcohol the first time they take alcohol. When they choose, take note, they choose. They are not forced. When they choose to do it again and again and again, the scripture says, whom you yield yourself to, you become a slave to. So if you yield yourself to sin, you become a slave to sin. So when they do it again, they do it again, they yield their authority to a higher demon called a power. And that power now comes in and brings about an addiction or a habit or a lifestyle. And then you have promiscuous people. You have ladies that don't dress properly. You have guys that don't dress properly anymore. You find people that are feeling compelled to sin. They they'll tell you, I don't know why I just keep doing this. I don't know why I just keep getting angry. There is a power over you, a power of that sin. 
And when that power comes in, it takes over your body in the sense that you find yourself unable to stop what you are doing. You find yourself struggling to stop what you are doing. The mistake is people struggle with their physical might. You can't struggle your way out of a power's hand. What do you do? You apply the blood. Number one, you repent. Your repentance shifts the legal ground. Your repentance will take back your authority from that power. Your repentance will reverse what the principality and the power have done in your life. It will reverse it because when you have repented of that sin, you are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. You are as though you never sinned. And so they don't have legal ground in your life. Number one, you repent. After repenting, you command the curses to be broken. You command the curse of addiction broken. You command the curse of, of promiscuity broken. You command the power of that sin in your life to be broken. You command the power of lust to be broken off in your life. You command the power of drug abuse to be broken off. You command the power of gluttony to be broken off. You command the power of anger to be broken off of your life. And where there are generational curses, you break them. I have videos on various topics. That's why I advise you go to my uh, channel, David Eichborn, on various platforms. I forgot to mention I'm on gab.com also. Go there you will see videos that teach on breaking generational causes. Powers are the ones that attach themselves to families and ensure oppression in a bloodline. They are powers. They are the spirits that can afflict even believers. Believers are victims also. You have believers that are struggling with generational causes of poverty. Because these powers don't only addict a person to sin. They impose conditions on people. That's why they are called powers, authorities. They impose conditions on people. They, when they are imposing conditions on Christians, like poverty, like sickness, like uh, uh, failures, retrogression, setbacks, they are doing so by the authority of someone else probably an authority figure who yielded his authority, like a father, a mother, a grandparent, they, that person yielded his authority to this evil demon called power, this demon called power, of the rank of power. And so that power, that evil power, is operating on the authority of a patriarch, a matriarch. It's operating on the, of, on the authority of someone that had authority over you like your ancestors, your parents, your grandparents, your uncles, aunties, guardians. So when you discover there's a generational curse, you now apply the blood of Jesus and you command those curses broken because when you know, you, re, you confess the sins of, that brought about that curse. That is why it's good you know the, 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 your family history. Even if you don't know it, you repent of every sin that you were involved in. You confess that your ancestry committed sin against God. You were not there to commit the sin. But when they committed the sin, it affected you because of bloodline. When Abraham was blessed, his generations were blessed, even those that were sinful. Bloodlines are important. So when you confess the sins of your, of your, your, your predecessor, your ancestors, you are declaring before God that they sinned and you are repenting of any connection you have with that. It takes the authority away from that demon and back to you concerning your life, not your grandfather's life, concerning your own life and those that are coming through you. So the curses end with the one ahead of you or rather the one before you and then when you from you onwards, your lineage 
is blessed. So when you break those curses, you are taking your authority concerning your life, that aspect the enemy has put you under bondage. You are taking that authority back to yourself. So you have defeated that evil power of poverty, that evil power of sickness, that evil power of failure. You defeat it by taking your authority back. Very important. So that is how you deal with evil powers. Now, the next one. By the way, people that are demon-possessed is also a power that is over them. People that are demon-possessed are possessed by powers. Powers. So they possess the unbeliever, they oppress the believers, and sometimes there are unbelievers that are not demon-possessed, but they are seriously oppressed by powers. So you take note of that. The next one we go to is the rulers of the darkness. The rulers of the darkness. And <laughs> You cannot, in some Bibles, it's called the, they are called the rulers of the darkness of this world. World here refers to age, world system. They are the rulers of the darkness of this, of this world order and systems. In Greek, the, the, the words in Greek for rulers of the darkness of this world is cosmocratoras tau. Scotus. Cosmocratoras refers to the rulers, cosmic rulers. The Greek word is cosmic rulers, meaning these are rulers that rule beyond physical geography. They rule beyond physical geography. They operate above physical geography. They are not limited by physical geography. These rulers are not limited to a body or a group of people. You can have a power operating in a small group, in a family, in a church. You can have a power. There are churches that when you get in there, you can sense immorality. You can sense wickedness. That's a power operating. They operate within smaller groups. But the rulers of the darkness of this world operate in systems. I'll give you examples. Movie industry. Music the industry, the generally entertainment industry, where you have comedy and all. Politics, sports, different uh, kinds of businesses. These rulers, they establish systems. They establish systems for governments. They, this Greek word of cosmocratoras which is cosmic rulers, it's also cosmic governments, cosmic world order, cosmic systems. These are, these are interpretations in English. Government systems, trends, world order. They establish trends. You find things just becoming a trend in different parts of the world. Who brought about sagging trousers that men wear trousers to show their underwear is the rulers of the darkness of this world. That is why you will find that same behavior in the U.S. You will find it in England. You will find it in Africa. You will find it in Australia. Because these spirits operate by systems, by governments. What they do is the powers are establishing their hold on various people and family lineages to get them in bondage. Then the rulers come in and mobilize the powers in various places to form an operating system. They now work with the powers who are subject to them to form an operating system. People in Nigeria that are watching movies, influenced by dirty movies from Hollywood, 
begin to sag their trousers because they are seeing it on the TV. The people that are acting those movies are controlled by powers. And when these ones in Nigeria yield themselves to that, this, the, the rulers of the darkness are using those powers to establish a system, a trend. And then people in the Philippines, you find some guys doing that. You find people in Russia, in Poland, in France. They begin to do all these things. And the rulers of darkness are using these powers to establish a government. And then when that government is established, people who do not behave like that are looked at as strange and sometimes persecuted. They say everybody is doing it. You hear such terms as everybody is doing it. It has become a government. It has become a system. There is now a government in place. You know, some people will say that these uh, cosmocratoras, is all, they also refer to as uh, judges or magistrates. They are the rulers. They give laws. They have now issued a law. It has now become a law to commit that sin. So it is becoming, it is now a trans border sin. It's a system. You have a music trend. These are the people that bring about trends, just like ladies exposing their cleavage. It started somewhere. Someone was tempted by a principality. She yielded herself. A power took over her. She now could not stop dressing without exposing her breast. And then another person saw her and, and liked it and continued doing it. And then they put them on television to beam it out to the world. And then ladies in different parts of the world now came under the rulers of the darkness of lust and then begin to open their chest for people to see. It now becomes a pattern. And when people cover themselves, even in churches, they are mocked by other Christians who say you are not trending, you are not modern, you are too conservative, you are not progressive. These Christians talking like that have come under the rulership of the, of the uh, cosmocratoras, the cosmic rulers. And then you have this evil trend in churches, outside churches, ladies exposing their breasts for people to see. In churches, we see it. In decent dressing. These are the works of the rulers of the darkness of this world. In decent uncleanness. You want to know what the, the darkness of this age are? Uncleanness. Wickedness. Corruption. Sexual immorality. Bestiality. Homosexuality. Racism tribalism, things that you can travel to another country and you are seeing it evident. And it's not like others, definitely you will see generational costs in this country, you see it in other country. But how you know that it has become a system is when it becomes a culture amongst the people. It becomes a culture that is beyond borders. You know, this is the work of rulers of darkness. It now becomes a culture. They establish cultures. They establish governments, systems, and trends. Be careful with what is uh, becoming trendy. Trendy dressing, trending talking, dirty language. Because, oh, we are just being progressive. You do your hair anyhow. I say, oh, we are being progressive. We are not conservative people. We are progressive. You are progressing to hell. Flee. How do you defeat the rulers of the darkness of this world? You preach the word of God. You see, these power, these evil uh, entities have their own uh, unique ways of being dealt with. The principality, you rebuke the thoughts. You protect what comes into you because they are the one telling you to look at this TV program. Look at that TV program. You refuse, ref turn your eyes away. Close your ears. You deal with the principalities. The powers, you break their power. Command them to be gone. You repent of generational sins and you, meant, you, repent, you confess the sins of your ancestors. When dealing with the rulers of the darkness of this world, because of what they do is to blind the minds of the people, you preach the word of God. It is the word of God that will defeat the rulers of the darkness of this world. How do you defeat trends? 
cultures preach the word. When you are preaching the word, you are bringing light to the darkness in the minds of the people, the darkness in the community. Preaching the word is how you defeat the rulers of the darkness of this world. When you are preaching, the word of God is going forth as beams of light shining into the people. I want us to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6. The Bible says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And so you deal with these spirits by preaching the word of God. You are prayerfully preaching, not just opening your mouth and talking. Prayerfully preaching. Prayerfully preaching. Because if you are not prayerful, there will be no power in your words and they will frustrate you. So you preach the word of God with power prayerfully preaching. You are praying, you are preaching. As you are doing that, the light of the gospel is shining into their minds. And the people are asking themselves, why am I following this trend? Why am I dressing so indecently? Why am I talking like this? Why am I showing my underwear to people? Why am I getting uh, this and that? Why am I getting plastic surgery to expand certain parts of my body? They begin to ask themselves and say, no, this is not right. The light of the word of God has shined into their hearts. Now, how the next group that we engage in warfare with, these are the highest ranks. You know, I was calling them as in an ascending order. The highest rank are the hosts of evil in heavenly places. In Ephesians 6, it says, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. In Greek, it is pneumatica. Punarias, I'm not a Greek person, so I may not pronounce it perfectly. It is pneumatica, which refers to spiritual forces. The spiritual force is called pneumatica. That is spiritual force, spiritual power. Pneuma force or pneumatica. Punarias. And toy eporean noise. Almost like I'm speaking in tongues, but I'm trying to speak Greek. But this is what the Greek says. This is, these are the Greek words to describe them. Now, what do those words translate? Spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Take note. It didn't say spiritual forces of evil in hell places. It said spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. When you say heavenly, what does that tell you? Above, where you have the celestial, the stars, the moon, above the clouds. When Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He was not saying that Satan was in hell fighting. He was referring to Satan's power of pulling men to hell, of sending men to hell. He said the gates of hell will not prevail because the church will be saving people who are heading to hellfire. So Jesus did not say Satan was in hell, living in hellfire with a pitchfork. No. He is not that ugly drawing of a guy with a pitchfork. No way. He said the gates of hell, referring to the pool of people to hell through sin. He said it will not prevail against the church because the church will keep saving people from hell. Now, these hosts of wickedness, this pneumatica and the other words that are difficult to pronounce, these spiritual forces, pneumatica, 
Tonarius and Toy Epauranius, or any, however it's pronounced. These spiritual forces are fallen angels, and they are in a realm that is not earth. It is higher than earth. And so we do not say, I bind you fallen angel. I bind you fallen angel. You are going outside your jurisdiction. And let me tell you one thing about these fallen angels. They operate according to law. They operate by law. They are legal. They are creatures of legal matters. They operate according to legality. So if you do something illegal, they will strike you because you have ventured outside your territory into their territory. They have legal right to hit you. That is why people that go binding fallen angels sometimes have it very bad. They fight us, but they fight us from their own dimension. They control what is going on on earth from their own dimension. This is what they primarily are after. These evil forces are primarily aimed, uh, uh, their primary goal is to prevent heaven from influencing what is happening on earth, to prevent the will of God from being done on earth, and to prevent the prayers of people from going to God. They try to intercept communication between heaven and earth. We see that in Jan Daniel chapter 9. I encourage you to read Daniel chapter 9. Where Gabriel was talking to Daniel and told Daniel, you, you've been fasting for 21 days. From the first day you started fasting, I was sent to you. But the prince of Persia withstood me and detained me there for 21 days. But Daniel was sent, uh, Michael was sent. Michael the archangel, your prince, was sent to release me. And here I have come to deliver this message to you. And I am going back to fight again with Daniel over against these people. So you see, Gabriel was detained in a realm, in a heavenly realm, between the third heaven and earth. He was detained by another angel, but, a, but an evil angel. When God cast Satan and his hosts out of the third heaven, he did not strip them of power. He left them with power. Satan has power. Jesus said so. But you see, there are laws established that Satan has his limitation on earth. He operates through sin. So this, in that second heaven, that is this where these fallen angels are legally assigned to. They do what they can to intercept communication. So this Gabriel was sent to make sure Cyrus, the Persian king, will decree that all nations should go back to their lands. That all nations, that the Israelites, the Judeans should go back to the land of Judah. And Gabriel was once sent to get Cyrus to do that in fulfillment of what God had said through Jeremiah that the, the Judeans would be in captivity for 70 years. But the prince, the ruling spirit, the fallen angel that was governing the Persian empire through the Persian rulers stopped Gabriel. He was trying to ensure that the plan of God does not happen because when the Judeans go back to Judah, then the Messiah can be born in Bethlehem. So they were trying to stop it. These are the same entities that hinder the prayers of people. They are the same entities that do things to make your mind distracted when you are praying. They are the ones that try to get Christians to be distracted when they are praying. You are praying and then your mind begins to dance around irrelevant things. It is the rulers of, it is the, the spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies that are trying to intercept your prayer. That you are about to pray and the next thing you are thinking around, oh, you, people want to pray, they start quarreling. They are the ones that attack ministries that are fulfilling the plan of God. 
All these powers attack ministries. The rulers of the darkness of this world, they attack ministries and all. But the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places, they are very much interested in destroying ministries because the ministries, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers and others are fulfilling the plan of God. They are fulfilling the plan of God. They are preaching the gospel. Let me tell you, the, as, you are, as, as you are moving in ascending order, you have those eight people, those fivefold offices that are more targeted. The office of the teacher will be targeted a lot by the principality and the power. The office of the pastor will be, will be fought a lot by the powers because they will try to get his congregation to be addicted to something to have a homogeneous sin. And then as you go higher in the ministry, the evangelist ministry will be attacked more by the rulers of the darkness because the evangelist goes beyond borders. The evangelist is proclaiming the word to open the eyes of the people. The prophets also, the apostles, these ones are heavily targeted. The apostle, prophet, and evangelist heavily targeted by the rulers of the darkness of this world and the spiritual forces in the heavenly places because they are trans-border ministries. I'm not downplaying the, minister, the office of the pastor and the teacher, but these ministries are trans-border and they are heavily fought by the highest ranks of evil forces. So the host of wickedness, they deal on legal grounds. If you are living in sin, they will block your prayer from going to God. The Bible says the prayer of the sinner is an abomination before God. They know the Bible better than we do. So when you are living in sin and you are there blabbing and say, ah, this day is my day and all those things, and then you are speaking tongues when you are, you are living in dirtiness, these entities will stand and say that your prayer will not go to God and your prayer will not go to God. And if God is sending an angel with the answer to your prayer, they are the spirits that will stop the angel. Just like they stop Gabriel, they will stop the angel. And say, this person is living in this sin, living in that sin. You, you, he does not have legal access to this blessing and does not deserve this blessing. And by law, should not be blessed. And then the angel has to go back with the answer of that person's prayer. Let me give you an example. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. These entities are the ones that accuse the brethren. It's not only Lucifer accusing the brethren. I believe there are other spirits that accuse the brethren. They accuse the brethren before God. You see, they operate strict by law. And they are very dangerous. In the book of Zechariah chapter 3, you see that the high priest was being accused. A high priest. I'm going to read quickly because of time. Zechariah chapter 3. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you. And I will clothe you with a change of garment. And I said, let them set a fair matter upon his head. So they set a fair matter upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. You can read the rest later on. These spirits, they go after leaders. They are the ones that control leaders of nations. World leaders come under the control of, the, of these uh, spiritual uh, forces of evil in heavenly places. They control leaders. They accuse leaders. The high priest was being accused because if they could frustrate the high priest's life, if they could present a case against the high priest, he would not be able to function properly. And if the high priest does not function properly, the nation of Israel will be vulnerable to attack. And you notice one thing. Where this host this spiritual wickedness in heavenly places operate. It's, it is usually angel against angel. Another example is the contention between Archangel Michael and Satan over the body of Moses. 
The Bible says that there was a contention. What did Michael say? Did he say, I bind you, I cast you, I burn you with fire? No. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Whenever there is a case of dispute between angel versus angel, where the, the law is going to be affecting the person that they are contending for in a negative way, they appeal to the higher power. Satan was contending for the body of Moses because Moses had sinned. Moses had sinned. Just like any other man, he had sinned. So Satan was quoting that he had legal access to that body because that body had sinned. The only body Satan could not talk to about was Jesus' body because Jesus never sinned. So he was asking for the body of Moses. And Michael did not begin to rail against Satan. What he did, seeing that by law, Satan could grab the body of Moses, he appealed to God. And he said, the Lord rebuke you. And then God, you know, God said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. He reserves the sovereign right of pardon. Just like a judge can pardon a convicted criminal. There are times judges will say, okay, they are going to pardon 50 people. Sometimes the president or the governor will pardon people that have, yes, they were convicted. They are even in prison. He will just pardon them. They are free to go. God has that power. And so when Michael said, the Lord rebuke you, he appealed to God and God exercised his sovereign right of pardon. The Bible says God hid the body of Moses. He buried the body of Moses where nobody knows. He hid it. So you don't go binding uh, fallen angels. I bind you. I bind you. I burn you. No. These ones operate by law. And how do, you do, how do you defeat them? Defeat them by the blood of Jesus and the word of your testimony. You speak the word of God. The Bible says they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their life unto death. You better live right when you are contending with these spiritual forces or they will pound you like yam. Live right. So you don't just say the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Whereas you love sin, they will pound you. They will break you. The Bible says they loved not their life unto death. Be somebody that has a love for God, then you will overcome. What do you do? You plead the blood of Jesus. These spirits are the ones that will create a bad reputation against somebody. They are the ones that will create huge slander. They were the ones that mobilized the Judeans to say, crucify him. They are the ones that will gather people and make them fight you. They can present lies against you and even show false evidence to prove you have done something you didn't do. They are the ones that will attack ministries with slander. Ladies will rise up and say, the pastor did this. Men will rise up and say, the pastor did that. They attack ministries. But what can you do? You cry out to God. That is how you defeat the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. You plead the blood of Jesus against them. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You speak God's word against them. The Lord has said this. The Lord has said this because these entities operate by law. When Satan was tempting Jesus, he was quoting the Bible. And what did Jesus do? He quoted the Bible against the devil. It is legal ground. You are dealing with legal. It's like a court. It may look trivial, but that is even the most dangerous place. The court. You are facing a court. It's a debate. There you have angel versus angel. And where the team is going against you, the blood of Jesus is played. That is the reason why Jesus presented his blood to the Father. When Mary Magdalene saw him, she wanted to hug him. He said, don't touch me. I have not ascended to my Father. Later on, he appeared again. I said, hey, come and touch me. Put your hand inside. He had to take his blood up there. So that his blood will speak. The Bible says the blood of Jesus speaks better things. The blood of Jesus speaks. 
that is the blood that is in the courtroom of God. That when there is a case against you that you messed up, you sinned. When there's a case against me that I sinned, I say, hey, oh God, I plead the blood of Jesus. I ask for your mercy. The blood of Jesus will not speak. So when the angels that are in charge of our case are, are debating for us and they see the thing is going against us, they will not plead. The Lord rebuke you to the enemy. And the blood of Jesus will speak for us and spare us. Just like Joshua the high priest, he had filthy garments. Spiritually, physically, he was a righteous man. Everybody say, this is a man of God. But in the spirit realm, his sin was showing. And what could the angel do? Ask God for mercy. This is how we defeat these evil forces. I want to just show you one example because of time. First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1 to 8. The Bible says in that, you read it, First Chronicles 21, verse 1 to 8. The Bible says, Satan stood against Israel and he moved David to do a census that was forbidden. Satan targeted Israel. But what he did was to move David to carry out a census that God had said they should not carry out. And when David did that, Satan had legal ground to attack the Israelites. The Bible says that God had to judge the nation, punish the nation. You see legal operations. Satan wanted to, to harm Israel. So what did he do? He got their leader to do something wrong so that there will be a national sin. The heavenly places is where laws are argued. I want you to thank God for his word today. Give him thanks. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, help us to war with wisdom and, and counsel. Lord, forgive us, Lord, for having warred the wrong way. Attacking flesh where, where we should attack spirits. Lord, help us to fight the good fight of faith, to war in spirit and wisdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to take your communion. We are going to move quickly. Take your communion bread and drink. Father, I give you thanks for every bread and drink lifted unto you. I ask in the name of Jesus that this bread becomes the body of Jesus in us and the drink becomes the blood of Jesus in us. I pray, Lord, that everything not of you in us would depart from us this time. And everything that we lack, we receive from the body of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We proclaim the death of Jesus Christ till he returns. His death brought us life, freedom, and peace. And so we proclaim that Jesus reigns in us. He lives in us and we live in him. We are one with him. Therefore, Satan has no ground in our lives. And we invoke the power of the covenant of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You break the bread, even if you are alone, break it. Get your oil. Father, we thank you for this oil. Your word says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. Your word says, by reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. Your word says that the disciples went anointing the sick and the sick were healed. Lord, may healing, deliverance, breakthrough, favor, protection come upon us and that which is ours. Through the anointing, 
with this oil. We pray your power will flow through this oil, that you consecrate and sanctify this oil in our hands. We thank you. May everything anointed with this oil be sanctified and come under your power, be influenced by your power. May the sick be healed. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's not just for you. It's for anyone you anoint in the name of Jesus. Anyone you anoint, the power of God will touch that person. Anywhere you anoint, the presence of God will come in. Evil powers will flee. You can reach me by WhatsApp and Telegram. Telegram, not a channel, a number. It's the same number. It goes for WhatsApp and Telegram. The number is plus two, three, four, which is the country code. Seven, zero, three, 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 four, three, six, eight. For those in Nigeria, you do not need to put plus two, three, four. Just put zero in place of that. Then by email, David Igbonner Ministries at gmail.com. Igbonner is spelled A I G B O N A. David Igbonner Ministries at gmail.com. The number again is plus two, three, four, seven, zero, three, 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 four, three, six, eight. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you.